There's a uh, penalty of death for a false prophet. Mm. But my issue is that, <laughs> you know, you, you made a mistake. And, and it's only one pastor that I've seen who's public. I can't think his name right now who publicly came and apologized for um, giving a false prophecy. And I think that, you know, when dealing with prophets, I think we have to look at it in, in a holistic light. We have to look at what their purpose was in the Old Testament. We also have to be careful uh, when we get into the intertestament uh, period when the people didn't hear from a prophet. And this was verified in 1 Maccabees 4 and 46. And that the prophet like Elijah came um, and by way of John began to usher in the new the new age, so to speak. So we have to be careful with that. But <laughs> I say this to the people who still subscribe to those people. I'm like, you know, if they hadn't said, you know, and, and it's fine. Uh, first off, you got to step back. And, and this basic falls in the lines of reconciliation. You know, sometimes you have to be set down and, and, and be disciplined. And be reconciled back and you know back to the position but you know but w w when you are stiff-necked which i call it because you will not admit and come publicly and say i apologize i ask for forgiveness you know i'm gonna step away and reconcile myself with god especially if you're a person who is again representing the kingdom so that's my whole issue with that and, and, and here's my thing too is that these same people who call themselves prophets they didn't see they didn't see COVID coming in 2020. <laughs> Let's just be real about it. They didn't see COVID in 2020. So wow. their reputation has always been suspect to me. And I'm kind of careful with prophecy. Uh, what is this? First John 4 um talks about test every spirit. And and I'll be I'll be up front that I I, I live in the, the middle of cessation. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> because oh. because because you know agabus uh kind of leaves some things open for me and i'm just saying and i'm not going to say that i personally have all the answers as it relates to a lot of things in the bible so that's why i kind of be in the middle of things especially that i'm uncertain of mm -hmm. until i get new information to, to guide me into a, a, a more informed decision. And that decision has to be led also by the Holy Spirit. All right. So, Brother Keith, do you believe that we have modern day prophets today? Do you believe that there are prophets um, kind of like what we've seen in the Old Testament, that, that God is actually speaking to certain people and giving them the word to present to us? Oh, you put me on the spot there. <laughs> you, you put me on the spot. Um, before, oh, right. when we're in Ephesians, uh, I'm trying to think. When we're in Ephesians, uh, before um, before we get down into the office, so to speak, we look at Ephesians um, um, second chapter twenty verse, okay. and it says that the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And then we get into it and we see that uh, we see that what those offices are as it relates to Christ. But Paul also said that at some point that these things will cease. Mm -hmm. and, what, and what was their purpose to begin with? You know, I think I think during the apostolic period and it, it just goes down into you know what I think apostles are. I think, you know, shucks. Let's get to the scripture. Uh, we, we go back to Acts and Acts specifically illustrates what were the qualifications for a prophet. You know, the ones who walk, teach with Jesus, you know, and things like that. And But Paul was different. And Paul also illustrated that when he said he was uh, one born untimely. And I'm paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. So those gifts of prophecy were to lay the foundation along with the apostolic tradition were to lay the foundation for the church beginnings. Now, like I said, we go to Agabus when he um, gave a prophecy about what was going to happen to Paul. But this is related to, you know, this was given to an apostle, not just a regular person. And I also had to go, I had to go back and look at it. And it goes to gifts. No, it goes in the gifts too, 
is when we look at uh Philippians, when we look at um Epaphroditus, I, I, I pronounce his name, <laughs> and, and, and and he was ill, and Paul said this. He said, you know, he, paraphrasing that he's glad that he survived so he won't have sorrow on top of sorrow, which means that, you know, the gifts, you know, the gifts of healing just wasn't spontaneous. It was the will of God by way of the Holy Spirit. So and, and so those variety of things um, lead me um, to, to the middle position. Do I believe that that prophets exist today? I will say this. They will have to edify the church and they will definitely have to agree with what scripture is already presented. Because that's one thing about what the Old Testament did. You know, it was now it was a progression, but they always gave certain things <laughs> that were related to scripture. You know, what they commented on, you know, it wasn't an isolation. That's number one. It wasn't an isolation, and they talked plainly. Uh -huh. It wasn't all this amb ambiguity with their language. And then they um they were um they were um predictions that were designed by way of scripture already and they were written and published events now this was something that just pulled out the air these were written and published events that was already um already present so to speak so do we have those prophets possibly like i say for me it's a possibility but it would have to edify the church it would have to meet those criteria and to me have to meet some of those same criteria if not all of the old testament prophets 